Now, you had a run with the Seahawks, the, playing for the team that your brother played for. Then they released you. You had a training camp opportunity with Miami Dolphins. What was that like when you didn't make that team and when you were cut? For Seattle or Miami? Miami. So the Miami the Miami one, for me, I mean, a lot of stuff was wake-up calls because, you know, you you see the moments that you have with your brother. You see the moments that you live with your family. And then those are pinnacle moments to how you shape or view the game. And I feel like as I got older, I didn't understand until I was able to kind of go through certain stuff as far as going to Miami. Because being cut wasn't a problem. It was just being able to, okay, take next step, they could get this spot back. But the real problem for me was the piece that I was missing is playing with my brother. Like, mm. I ignored it over and over and over again. I can't be it because I'm still myself, energetic. Let's go get it no matter what. We got this. And going from Miami down, I remember going to Arizona. I'm going to uh, the, the New York Jets. I'm going to different spots. And next thing you know, it, no matter what I was doing, I wasn't receiving that piece of feeling like, you know what, I really love this. But I was loving this because of who I was doing it with. And that's the realization that I came down to. And it's like, then Buffalo called, then Dallas called. And I was saying, no, I want to go to Jacksonville. And that's what it's going to be. And I left it at that. And I was like, for, for me, and I and I know this is the case for anybody, when it's not when it when it's not the love that you have, you trying it's time to hang it up. And I feel like the love that I had was a family that was doing it with me. You know what I'm saying? It brought more push than in anything imaginable. And when you with your brother and you experience so many different things, it's hard to let that go. So hold on, you're retiring because you couldn't play with your brother? No, I'll re I'll retire because it's not the same feeling that I get from football. It all plays a part of it. And for me, you know, football is always plan B. Like football was always a thing was like, well, I'm going to give everything I got and then whatever they give me, I'm going to take. And now that I'm at the point where I made it to that point, I experienced it with my brother. It's like the stuff that I like to do is a help. Like I love people. Like I'm just a people person. I'm a server. Like, it just, it, it's just in me. That's what my heart is at. And it's just like, what can I do to feel my peace? Because now it's not about who I'm doing it for. It's all about me. How do I feel that comfort? How do I feel that peace? And it's like, I love people. Like, how do I help them? How do I can share a piece of myself to help somebody else grow? And it's me sharing my story. It's me living my truth. And it's like, you know what? If you do that, you will accomplish anything you set your mind to. No matter if they say you can't, no matter if you say uh, your, your, whoever your peers said you can't, it's solely and truly up to you and that's what i want to share and the thing is me being able to have opportunities that uh, uh that's set for me being able to work with the legend being able to be a mentor to them guys leaving the league and coming to the league because we all we all been there for we understand that for players we were shaped to do a certain thing we were shaped to be strong for shape to don't show weakness we were shaped to say you know what we machines we always got this but the thing is who got us Mm -hmm. And sometimes we need people to support us mentally, physically, spiritually. We need it all. And thank is, why not be me? Why not? Why can't I be there for them? And I want to. I want to serve them and help them because we all need it. And it, it, it just got to be a change in that. I love that. I love that. This is I Am Athlete Tonight. I'm your host, Lee J. Dudes, but with my guy, Omar Kelly. We're talking to my brother, Shaquem Griffin, who just recently retired from the NFL. You talked about it a little bit right there. I wanted to know, you know, you played in the NFL, played, I believe, four years. Um, what's next? I know you you mentioned in the, you know, the play, the, the Players' Tribune that you talked to NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell and potentially you're going to be working with the NFL Legends community. So what's the next step for Shaquem Griffin? Oh, uh, man, motivating and inspiring. I feel like that, that that's the, the best way to put it. You know, I've been doing motivational speeches now, and I just I recently got back from Arbonne. And being able to just share that story, share that light, and be able to, you know, share them viewpoints for guys to kind of, no matter what, like everybody always asks, like, what are you trying to accomplish? It's like, if I can help one person figure something out, they can help a thousand people later. And that's really the mantra of it. Like, I got to be able to give this info because I can't do nothing by just keeping it inside. I got to share this because who who knows who can help next. And that's the main thing. And we also got a, a movie coming out that we've been working on for me and my brother. And it's, it's so many different ways to be able to execute helping people. And it's just like, now I'm just applying it. You know, being able to be around guys like Bobby Wagner, KJ Wright and Russ and be able to learn different aspects about how can I share a piece of myself and help people out? I remember I learned from Bobby on how he shares financial literacy, come from where he come from and being able to give back to his community at home. I remember how KJ helped out Ben on Wells, going and traveling and helping people out. It's like, how can I share a piece of myself and help them? 
And then soon I figure out that route, I start taking the steps towards it. So what what is this movie? I know you said it's about you and your brother, but is it is it like a um is it like a bibliography of, of your guys' life and journey throughout the league into where you're at now? Yeah, I mean, uh it's more of a family oriented story. Like I don't want it to be directed straight to just strictly football. Like that's not the story. Yeah. I mean, I feel like for for us, what we're trying to do and what we're trying to capture is talks about you know, being able to have that, that family and faith and how it can forge so many pathways. And you see so many different things from your parents to your peers to people who truly love you. They do so many sacrifices that goes unheard, that goes unseen, that doesn't get celebrated. But it's a pinnacle in all of our lives, no matter what piece they play. It's like, how do we contribute to the family-oriented movie instead of just a football story? It's more than that. You know, I remember my... Um, you know, my dad background, I remember when he got out, when he got out of prison, you know, you know what? I'm going to make sure that I give everything I got to my kid. I'm going to make sure I give everything, of all, every single piece of me to get them on the, on the right road. And nowadays you don't hear about them, them black male fathers that, that get praised for handling business, that get praised for stepping up and doing what they got to do, no matter the background they came from. And thank is that should be heard. That should be celebrated because it are it, it is guys out there and it is fathers out there who take the initiative to make sure they take care of their they family because it means something to them. And see 10 years, 20 years later, the generation now, seeing something that he started with us and keeping it going. I mean, I mean we was blessed to have that. But like I said, it's a, it's a statistic that shows that a lot of black fathers, a lot of fathers in general, don't share that love for their family because they came from a hard background. But that's not the case. It is people who can grow up rough, but choose to change best for their family. Now, Shaquem, I wanted to ask you this question because you're such an inspiration to a lot of people. I mentioned to you earlier that you're an inspiration <laughs> to my wife and all the kids that she works with. What about your life at this young age are you the most proud of mm. about yourself? Understanding and growth. I feel like, you know, the best way to explain it, man, I feel like I had a lot of times mentally where it's like, you kind of feel that where I explain it, a great area where like you're trying to figure out what's next. You're trying to figure out what's you. Yeah, personal growth and understanding, you know, um, I'm most proud of that because, you know, I had them times mentally and I know a lot of people out there can probably understand where you just have that great area where you just ain't got to figure it out, but you want to see. You want to see what you want for yourself. You want to see who the person you become as you get older. And I feel like having that growth and understanding and knowing the adversity and the stuff that and obstacles I went through, what shaped my life. But then I also remember the values that I learned at a young age that got me to where I'm at. Because a lot of us tend to forget a lot of values that we learned at an early age that gave us the, the initial push to, to get to the stage that we at. It's like, now, how do I refocus on that energy? How do I refocus on them, them small techniques? Because it's the small things that can get us a far ways. And that's what I'm proud of, to understand that, you know, everything ain't perfect, you know, and it's okay not to be okay. And when you understand certain like that, you kind of can be able to take all that bad stuff, release it, and to bring in the good and get the growth from there. Yeah, Shaq, just talk about, you know, you hinted on some of the values. What specific values that you think you can share with your story and everything you've been through that can help somebody, like you said, maybe when it, what's your work with the legends? Maybe it's your work with going to different schools and, and talking about your story. What specific values have you learned along the way that you think you can relay that message to somebody and, and it might help them along the way as well? I mean, I, a lot of stuff for me is just, uh, best way to put it, culture keepers. Uh, a lot of people say a culture keeper is in a locker room, but why not share that into a community space? Why not share that into a business space? I feel like what I learned in the locker room can be applied to life itself. You know what I'm saying? If you want to see it something a certain way, then you got to be able to preach that. You got to lead by example. You got to be able to show that. And it's like, I want to be able to show the mindset to know that when you got somebody who cares about you and want to see you win, for you both, I'm pretty sure you guys want to see each other win. When you have guys like that in your circle, don't navigate away from it and close them off because just as well that you want to see them win is vice versa. So why leave stuff behind? Why leave stuff off the table when you can when you can let it go, release it, and then build off of that? And a lot of a lot of us nowadays can be closed off, you know what I'm saying? And not knowing that support that we have, no matter if it's your mom, it's your father, it's your peers, it's your best friend, it's your kin folks. There's always somebody who really do genuinely want to see you win so don't shut them out because sometimes we is like i said it's okay not to be okay it yeah. literally is thank is be able to release that negativity and bring in all the positivity because it's a better you the next day bring it out 
Now, I want to get to some football talk. Tell me why Shaquille Griffin and the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to be a better team than they showed last year. Uh, man, I feel like the culture they're creating. I feel like a lot of the stuff was disconnected with Jacksonville. They had a lot going on. Let's, let, let's all agree to it. And I feel like now is they honing in on protecting each other. They honing in on how can I be there for you. And I feel like it's a pinnacle of football because – if I can trust in you, then we can get a lot of stuff going on. And I feel like that trust factor is starting to build. And that was the main thing they was missing. They was all over the place trying to figure themselves out. But now they're trying to get a, a, a culture over there where it's like, I got you, you got me. I got your back, you got mine. So let's go to war. Now, how, how do you think Russell Wilson is going to do in, in Denver since you were a former teammate? <laughs> I feel like he's going to do an amazing job in uh, in Denver. One thing about Russ is his progression doesn't change. The way he prepares himself, the, way, the preparation doesn't change. His uniform may have changed, but Russ has not changed. You know, and I feel like a lot of people miss mistaking that because it's like, what Russ going to do? Russ going to do what Russ does. His progressions don't change. The way he prepares himself for each and every game, the way he practices. I mean, it's literally, it's so impressive that people literally just have to see it to believe it. And I feel like once you see Russ play, ain't nothing changed. Cause he going to get that ball out. He yeah. definitely going to get that ball out. Sticking with football, Shaq, um, what will be your greatest memory on the football field? One in college, then one in the NFL. Um, I feel like a big memory for college was, oh um, man, going undefeated. I mean, I feel like it was so many memories from that. It was just being able to play against Auburn, win that game and championship because, like, we were feeling ourselves. I feel like a hundred percent. Like, you know, it, it's crazy because, like, UCL. I feel like we pride ourselves in how we feel about each other. Like. Yeah. Man, we are we are we are a loving community over there, and I feel like it was a happy moment to be able to bring something back to show our peers, to show our alumni, to bring something back to our community. It means something to us, and that's why we always rave about it. it. It means something to us. And as far as the NFL, having that shared sack with my brother against Aaron Rodgers during the playoff game, I mean, it's so crazy. After after the sack, and I remember my brother was like literally falling over me. I had no idea it was him. Mm. Everything was happening so fast. I'm getting up, running, celebrating, all the emotions going. I looked over to my right. It's my brother sitting right there. I was like, man, you was there too? Yeah. Instantly, so we instantly celebrating. And thing is, it wasn't planned. It was just natural. It was like, man, I'm glad to see you here too. Let's turn up. <laughs> I got one more question for you, Shaq, and we'll go ahead and let you go. Have, have you been following uh, UCF this year? Yeah, yeah I've been, I've been, I'm going to get back to USC. Yeah, me, have I been following UCF? Yeah, this year. Or, yeah, since you've been playing. Yeah, I've been following UCF, man. I wish I can go there more, but, you know, like, I was just there uh, not too long ago. I'm trying to get there, actually. I've been talking to uh, Clayton to get there to talk to the guys, but. Yeah, he man. called me, too. <laughs> yeah, man, but, yeah, I've been following them, man. But for the most part, like, when it comes to UCF, I just hope that culture that was created when you guys were there, when we came there, like, you know, when it comes to coaches and everything changed, I just, I just hope that the culture is still staying how we was taught how we was brought up. Cause you, you never know. Like, like I said, I'm learning new coaches as they go. You know, I only know them cause I played against them when they was at Auburn, but, <laughs> yeah. you know, so it's like, I, I know them to a certain extent, but the guys that's there, they mean something to me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 100%. So I just hoping that their culture don't get changed from the, t the coaches that they with. I hope that they all come in and be together and always, but you don't know until you have them one-on-one -on -one talks with them guys away from the media and away from the one-on-one -on -one talks. Yeah, I've talked to Gus, and, and that the culture has been a big thing. That's why he's been trying to get a lot of us to come back. Um, I think me and you will agree on this. Like, we've always had that underdog mentality at UCF. Yeah. We, we just never have gotten the respect that was due to us, even though year after year we put players in the league, right? Yeah. Uh, some of the top players in the league. And, you know, people talk all that noise about, you know, the 2017-18 year where you guys went undefeated and, you know, claimed the national championship. But honestly, I tell people all the time, like, the, the team that beat the two teams that played the national championship was Auburn, and we dogged we dogged them that game. So them. if we would have been able to get into the playoffs, it, I think it would have been anybody's game. So I think for the longest time, like we've had a personal beef with Alabama because of that 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 one year. And I would love I would love for us to play Alabama in the. Next I would love to, I would love to see. I don't I think they like want to put us like on the deserved. schedule though. I feel like I feel like it's deserved, honestly. But you know, a lot of teams. I ain't gonna lie to you. I feel like some teams run from it. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's my it's honest opinion. Of, but it's it's that, okay. Just know we we looking for that. the smoke. But when you're ready for it, go ahead and give it. 
Cause yeah. we looking for it. Florida had to learn the hard way last year. We had to <laughs> nah. like, Cause we like, looking for the smoke. Y'all not like that yeah. no more. Like Urban Meyer, them boys been gone. Y'all not like that no more. It's, it's our time. Y'all well, talking that talk now. Yeah, uh, Shaq, yeah. We, we truly appreciate you coming by. The stopping, Golden stopping Knights. Stopping by and chopping it up with us on I Am Athlete tonight, man. I can't wait to see what the future holds for you. I know you Thank said you're going to be working with the Legends community. I'm I'm, look, I'm looking forward to this movie. I want to see the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, it, it, it's going to be something to love, man. I, I promise you that. I'm going to keep you updated, man. I appreciate yeah, you guys please. for bringing me on. You already know, big bro. It's, it's anytime, whenever, man. Already. I appreciate All you guys. Love.